Yes, don't you want to high five me? <laughs> what does Y E S spell? Y E S? Yeah. Y E S. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, TikTok. An app that is allowing us to consume more media than ever before in all of human history, and for some reason, we seem to not be very focused on what the long-term negatives of that might be. You know, iPad babies will surely just grow out of their three and a half second attention span, right? Well, probably not, but that's not what we're worried about today. We are worried about, once again, the worst TikToks on the internet. Once again, I have gone through a lot of the TikToks you guys have sent me, and have picked out a few that I think are worth talking about. Now, I haven't gone through all of them fully because like always, I kind of like to be surprised as I record, but I've done some skimming and uh, you guys have done some damage this time. Some of these are going to be pretty hard to watch, so if you're extra susceptible to cringe, I would recommend maybe you sit this one out. But if you think you have what it takes, well then prepare to run the gauntlet, my friend, because uh, it's about to get pretty stinky in here, okay? Let's begin. Please subscribe. Instead of calling me a snack, just call me a candle. All righty, off to a wonderful start. Now, I've had a lot of people send me this guy's TikTok, and I see why. On a certain level, it's just kind of sad, because nobody who's not just extremely desperate for attention is doing this. Nobody just wakes up one day and thinks for absolutely no reason, you know what, I'm gonna go start screaming in public and just disturbing people's days, because why not? A lot of people think any attention is good, whether it's negative or not, and I think this is a pretty good example of that. Excuse me, sir? Mind answering one quick question for a TikTok interview? Sure. Where do you find the most joy in life? Ooh, good question. Probably with friends and family. Am I you shaking that <laughs> You know, as a kid, I never really realized how strange these kinds of videos were because honestly, I probably would have thought that something like screaming in a mall was funny when I was like 12. But what I never realized looking back was that the people doing it were never 12, you know what I mean? Like they were always grown men. And you know, as a person who's not 12 anymore, it's very weird to see guys in their 20s and in other videos we've covered in their 30s or 40s still doing this. It just immediately tells me that your humor and probably a lot of your personality as well has not matured since middle school. Everybody, I have an announcement to make! Now, as awesome as this video is, sadly, it does have its negatives. Now, it seems like this guy is kind of the trendsetter for, um, you know, whatever you want to call this. Because just like anything else, this guy gets a lot of followers, a lot of views, and it makes other people want to do it. And then we get videos like this. No one actually cares what you do. Watch this. I can literally go right into this target and just be an absolute menace. Guys, don't you want to high five me? <laughs> I can literally scream random dates at people and no one cares. January 14th, 2023. March 7th, 2023 at 11 p.m. You know what I would much rather see than this? Like the 30 to 45 seconds after they stop recording, when they look around and realize that nobody's finding them funny, and the only validation they're getting is maybe from the cameraman. That's the real juicy stuff. All right, so I'm gonna have to replace the audio for the next few videos because this guy uses copyrighted music, so I apologize for that. But I just couldn't leave these out because, oh my god, they're just so goofy. Like, I'm not trying to armchair psychologist this, but this is like narcissism. This is like if Patrick Bateman had a TikTok. Every single video by this guy is just a made-up scenario where somebody is talking about how attractive he is or some girl is going crazy over him. Like, dude, you know that we know you're writing these captions, right?
out of all the things, all the made up scenarios that you can make up about a girl getting mad about you, because you have, you have full creative freedom here. This is your TikTok. This is your universe. You choose to make a video about a girl getting mad at you for having a heart next to your mom's name. First off, why, why is your mom's name her actual name in your phone? And how long have you known this girl to where she's getting this mad about you talking to another woman, yet she doesn't know your mother's name? Imagine sitting down and unironically writing a script for a video where you talk about an imaginary girl who's so unbelievably obsessed with you that she has a breakdown because you're texting your mother. I felt like my, I lost a part of, a really big part of me, you know, when I lost my mom. All right, so if you can't tell what's being said here, it's a woman at a dentist office talking to a customer or a patient, and the patient's talking about how her mother died and how it's been really hard, and the people are laughing, and I guess making a joke out of it. What I don't get is why you'd post this onto the internet. Now look, as a person who's worked it, I know that customer service is not exactly a glorious job 24-7, and honestly, this, this might not be something you share with a dentist receptionist, but laughing about it and making a joke about somebody's loss is just... It's it's not okay. Why somebody would record this and then make it public, I will never understand. What? Gen Z's trying to what? Cancel Eminem. Gen Z's trying to cancel Eminem? Honey, that's cute. Listen, little kitties, let me make this quite clear. This man was around even before you were here. So what, you're all mad because the man was a lyricist while all your rappers are a mumbling gibberish? No, go ahead and shut your mouth. Better yet, go and sit your ass in time out because boy was running laps even before you could walk. Hell, boy was spitting bars even before you could talk. So no, afraid you're null in, boy, dear. I'm oh, God, okay. An oldie but a goodie. Now, I remember when I first saw this video, I was actually considering making a whole video just about this woman's TikTok account. There's just so many things wrong with this. Like, first off, I don't think anybody was ever really trying to cancel Eminem. I feel like this video was an idea this woman thought of and then just made it without like any actual attempt to cancel Eminem being made. She just wanted to rap. And then the argument itself is terrible. Like just because Eminem was around before Gen Z was born doesn't mean he's not open to criticism. Are you saying you have to be alive while somebody is relevant to know if they're good or bad? Because that's not how that works. And then nobody's going to remember Z? Do you genuinely think people are going to forget an entire generation like like it's a fad. What century are we in? 20. Yes. If you're driving 60 miles an hour and you drive for one hour, how far do you end up traveling? Um, I don't know. I'm not good at math. All right, so I've been sent this series of videos like a million times, and I'm probably never going to address them after this because I'm almost certain they're all fake. I mean, some of the questions that these people supposedly can't answer, I just don't believe. Like, one of the ones in this video is what does Y-E-S spell? Like, come on, you're not finding somebody who doesn't know how to spell yes. I'm just not buying that. But another thing I wanted to address is that these videos are generally titled something like interviewing Gen Z or Gen Z can't answer or anything. And then I see YouTubers, YouTubers that I know the age of, covering these videos, and they'll make a video titled like, Gen Z is doomed, or Gen Z is stupid, and they'll talk about Gen Z like they're not a part of it. I hear it all the time, I see it in my comments occasionally, people talking about Gen Z, and they don't even realize they're a part of it. Like, if you were born in 1997 or after, you're Gen Z. I'm Gen Z. If you're 24, you're Gen Z. I see so many people making fun of themselves, and they don't even realize it. Vent, because the algorithm is all messed up and nobody's gonna see this anyway, but can I just say, Michaels, you do not understand your customer. Whose idea was it to put self-checkouts in at Michaels? You do not understand your customer's creative brain. All right, right off the bat, I'm rather confused. Okay, ignoring the Michaels right now, where are we? Is this a moving vehicle? It doesn't look like we're moving based off the windows, but it sounds like we're in a wind tunnel. I mean, the camera is violently shaking, but it looks like you're in the driver's seat, so I hope you're not doing this while driving. What is going on? Our brains are in motion constantly. They, the, the machine in there to create and do things with our hands never ends. So when we're shopping in your store, we're filling up our cart with all the things we're thinking about. And by the time we get to the register, there are some things that we've decided, oh, I don't need that. Okay, number one, 
make it easier for someone to delete something from their car instead of having to wait their five minutes for an associate to come over and do it for you. Um, okay, uh, I'm not really sure what this has to do with having a creative brain, but I kind of agree with this, at least part of it. Yeah, I shouldn't have to have an associate remove something from my cart. But if you know you don't want it by the time you get to the checkout, why did you scan it? Do you not realize until after you scan it? I mean, I don't really understand what you're saying. And if you want to have self-checkout, make the space where you put the merchandise really big because I can tell you that your creative customer is buying a lot of stuff and it's not working. No self-checkout at Michael's, you didn't do your research, and a vent that no one's going to see anyway. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure what's being argued for in this video. I think most people's creative process will be just fine when encountering a self-checkout at Michael's. I think you might be projecting a little bit here. I've never heard a person want to be forced to make small talk with a cashier. I guess there's something for everybody, though. Well, guys, another day, another round of the internet's worst TikToks, and I've got to say, today's were pretty rough. A lot of them I just didn't understand more than anything, and I just don't get why somebody would want to watch some of these things, or why the person creating them thought it was a good idea to create them, but I'm sure there's people out there who think the same about my videos, so you know what? Guess we all just gotta find what makes us happy, right? If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything, but for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. Subscribe.